Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We are playing 1.6.1, a modded career series. Yes, indeed, it has been some time since we have hosted such wonders on this channel, but I feel like it is time. As I say, we are playing the modded series, and I'm also going to give myself a bit of a restriction here. I'm only ever going to recover from the Kerbal Space Center. I'm going to try not to use any of the tracking station or recovering from the flight screen just to kind of give myself a little bit more restriction you can see here we have the expanded technology tree not all of these nodes are actually filled at the moment though we are going to end up feeling a lot of them at the moment we have all of these mods i say all these mods it's about 58 mods uh this is not the final form i reckon by the time kerbal space program upgrades to 1.7 we will finally fit fixed in the final form and then just in time for all the mods to break and then for us to carry on playing this like some sort of unupdating stick in the mud one of the things you should note is that we do not get manned materials until this particular piece of science is opened which kind of put a little bit of damper on the way that i wanted to open this series i wanted to open up with a skip with jeb i suppose that is going to uh, have to wait so instead we're going to build ourselves an unmanned craft and to uh, make things even better all we get is the stay putnik if you guys are not aware of that uh, this thing has no sas this has no next to no control it also comes without a top uh, attachment node so there's no way of putting a, a top parachute on there so i build this little weird cagey uh, construction thing which i which i like i actually think it's kind of good the uh, the structural supports kind of look like they're built on the stay putnik and we can kind of add other things onto that and i think all in all for our first unmanned mission that's kind of good we're, we're not trying to get any particular like records or anything like that we just want to get ourselves that first little bit of uh, science to get going and i do the thing that i normally do where i stack solid boosters underneath other solid booster outputs so that we can uh, blow them up in lieu of having decouplers because at this stage of the game we just don't have any decouplers so we, we need to do things in a more kerbalized manner oh yeah now this this one is literally just going a straight up and down which totally plays in to my not recovering outside the view of the uh, ksc mainly because you know it's right underneath me all right funny little thing that's playing out here we got to the top of the arc and i was like all right let's drop the parachute so we don't build up too much speed i then extended the antenna to start sending the science home just in case we did build up too much speed and couldn't stop i then went oh wait no my parachute's not going to deploy until one kilometer so we should probably put that up and then in the time of doing that my antenna broke because we were going too fast Bad, bad, bad times were had. Well, you know, to be honest, it wasn't bad times because, of course, we've still got the science with us. But now that we enter into the uh, most exciting part of any flight, the long, definitely not boring plummet with nothing else to do, uh, it gives me a good time to tell you that I actually stream the recordings of, of all these episodes now on my Saturday or Tuesday stream, Saturdays at 2 till 4, Tuesdays 6 till 8. Me and a regular group of stream friends, we all get together and we talk about what we're going to be doing in the mission. Obviously, I need a little bit of help with this. I'm not as good a Kerbal player as I used to be, and I'm quite prone to forgetting things such as parachutes and, uh, well, parachutes mainly. It's the one that I always forget and you realise far, far too late. The other thing we do is we take screenshots together and realise that they're terrible screenshots and try and make better screenshots, and then notice that the underside of the parachute doesn't actually come with any texture upon it. Pointed out by ZTech there, that was uh, actually an interesting fact that I had never noticed before. Where is the underside of the parachute? what is even catching the atmosphere at this point I, i'm not entirely certain though we have a, a good time talking about it on stream so we're coming down in amongst the research lab which uh, to me seems like the perfect place to touch down your first rocket we uh, spend a little bit of time with the science science alerter or the science alert re-alerted one of the many mods uh that are being currently uh, looked after by Linux Guru Gamer, the guy who seems to be pretty much single-handedly keeping all the old mods alive after people lose interest. And uh, it, that's cool. He's, a, he's a, an awesome man. Right, so we got ourselves a whole bunch of science there. 31 science points. That, of course, equates to two science nodes. That is pretty pretty standard. So I think we should probably go and have a bit of a look in here and see what exactly it is we want. Obviously, I am looking towards having... Bigger, better engines, liquid engines that are steerable, that's always good. But the other thing I really want, this Engineering 101, not only does it come with a utility wrench and some fuel tanks and stuff like that, but more importantly, it comes with a decoupler. And decoupler, one of the very important early game technologies. One thing you will also have noticed in the General Rocket Tree is that we have the Snacks mod installed. Yes, indeed, we've got a life support mod. Not one that kills our Kerbals, though. Uh, one that only makes them pass out and not, like, not be contactable for a little bit, which I think is a little bit better. 
Uh, I, I'm not I'm not into Kerbal Death, it has to be said. I would rather avoid that, at, if at all are possible. We spent a fair bit of time on stream talking about which sciences we're going to be taking next, which ones we need to go through. Obviously, we want to have, like, fuel pumps and uh, the solar and batteries and stuff like that, because these are all uh, range-extending items, things that really enable you to start stripping down rocket weight uh, for the amount of fuel that you're carrying, which uh, obviously is amazing. The moment that we work up towards asparagus, we'll start be taking full advantage of that. And I also noticed that some of the tech tree nodes aren't quite connected up the way that you would imagine that they would be but i suppose this is what happens when you have such an extensive tree that sometimes has to cross over itself and do all sorts of weird things all right forgetting about that let's go and get on with our next mission you can see here that we're going to take the top probe out uh, the top little assembly the cage and science and then put this onto a much much more capable rocket for a given value of capable anyway the thing that we're trying to do is actually just give this guy uh, off to a different set of biomes these first missions are kind of more backdrop to try and get a little bit of science we're not really looking to do anything overly tricksy though you can see i'm now using the radial decoupler directly underneath my uh, control pod there to kind of give me a little bit of uh, cheaty stack decoupling action uh the other thing that i'm trying to do uh, aside from come up with a great name from stream cheers chat what a what a wonderful name uh is try and figure out like my aerodynamic lift and stuff like that make sure that we're not going to spin horrifically out of control when uh, when we stage or anything like that a little bit of foreshadowing i may have I've got that a little bit wrong. But one thing that I do know is that we are a little bit heavy. And I'm just about to go and up the, upgrade my launch pad when the whole of the chat is like, no, 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 it's only going to leave you leave you with 10 grand. Don't do that. You won't be able to launch the rocket. I went back and I had a look at the numbers. And I was like, you know what? You, you guys are smart. I'm not a smart man. You are smart men. Uh, so we, uh, we go back and we uh, just drop a little bit of fuel out of those bottom solid rockets there which probably means that their their efficiency is the suboptimal shall we say they're carrying a lot more weight than the fuel would actually like pay tail but that that's fine that's that's something we can get over especially as they are one of the things that have been uh, thrown away early in the flight so this next flight gives me a chance to talk about what we are going to consider the end point of this season. I know it's a, it's a little premature to be talking about it right now, but uh, I asked the people in chat what we should be talking about during this first episode, and they're like, well, tell people where where we're going. And uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Now, obviously, the first, first sort of mini milestone is to open up all the KSC buildings and to fully unlock the tech tree at a mini milestone right that's going to take the vast majority of like 20 30 episodes something like that uh the next thing we want to do is of course we've got kerbal constructs you might not be able to see the uh or might not be able to recognize the button on the toolbar on the side there but kerbal constructs so i'd like to open up some bases on some other planets the one that's particularly been taking my fancy uh suggested by patreon uh is to build a, a lathe submarine base which i think sounds like a great idea now again i'm going to be giving myself uh, restrictions on when I can and can't build with the constructs. I'm going to try and do it so it makes sense. I'm afraid you as the viewer is just going to have to uh, take it that I, I want to make a challenging uh, environment for myself and I won't just be like, yeah, I'm there, let's do it. Another point that I want to address is the fact that we've got Kerbal Inventory System installed and I typically always use it really badly. Mostly I just use it as a, a quick fuel connection or to slap some parachutes on a, a mission that i forgot to put some parachutes on pretty standard thing as i previously explained uh but i would like to use it to create other vessels out and about i would like to uh there, there is this system where you can build entire rovers or entire pa uh, hang gliders and things like that uh so i would like to try and do that also with the uh the addition of the trajectories mod down there i'd like to make some uh precision landings i'd like to go and find like some of the tallest markers on most planets and some of the lowest markers on such planets and uh that that little marker there should do as well spend a little bit of time talking about that so we're going to jump on ahead uh talking about the marker actually of uh, how it shows up above the water uh, and here we go this is kind of like pushing the boundaries of how far i reckon is a an acceptable pickup from the ksc but i'm going to take it we're, we're, we're going to take that one it seems like a old winner or at least close enough to do for us the next science purchase is an absolute no-brainer we want to start getting kerbals into this kerbal space program so we are going to need manned space survivability sciences yes indeed we need those cockpits so we can start getting our kerbals out into space Jebediah Kerman. 
for reasons of your obvious excellence and your ability to get in the seat before anybody else even has a chance, you have been selected for a mission. Among all the astronauts in the training complex, you were the first to get out the door. None of your peers and colleagues possess the sheer determination to rise above all others and say, yes, I am number one. While others sit around and talk about safety briefings, you're out getting the work done. Whilst Mission Control likes to plan the mission, you are the mission. Whilst the engineers sit around and figure out how to fix stuff, you're out breaking them. This mission will be your most dangerous to date. You will be pushed to extremes and set new records. See sights never before enjoyed by Kerbal Kind. Riding upon the top of the latest of Kerbal technology. Technology... <coughs> Excuse me. Technology that's not designed to go anywhere, Jeb! Ha! So, for those of you that don't know, I don't like Jebediah Kerman. I think he is a self-righteous, self-fulfilling, self-profit who will only come along and look out for himself. He does not have the space program in mind. He only has his own political ends in mind. And so, because of this, we have made him a craft that will never, ever, ever make it actually to space. As you can see, as I'm just highlighting there, there is not actually a decoupler between the bottom and middle stage, if you will. It was all a ruse to get the mighty Jebediah Kerman into this spacecraft so we could fire him off. My plan was, of course, to get him over towards the island airstrip over that way, but it turns out that I had uh, under-engineered it just a little bit too far, which, you know, it's okay. This was literally just a ruse, so I, I'm not really uh, too bothered. Uh, I took a couple of attempts just to make sure we could get out this far, and this was by far the most cinematic of those attempts, so I, I went for this one. Uh, I was holding on to the lower stages, uh, because you can see we do actually have a decoupler built into the cockpit at the top there. But I was holding on to the lower stages, at least until the top of the arc, for the ability for the mass to continue me through. Obviously the cockpit weighs a lot less than the entire rocket does, so if I was to decouple the, ro the rocket, as we have just seen there, it will continue on and the cockpit will de decelerate really quickly. So that's, that's what I was trying to avoid there. Down to the last kilometre, the uh, cockpit is... No, not the cockpit, the parachute is going to open up and save the cockpit. And uh, this leads me to say that I'm not an absolute monster. As you can see, I have given a Jebediah a bunch of snacks stuck onto the top of his cockpit there. So, you know, he's going to be able to survive quite well out here. Of course, if, you know, he wasn't able to survive any... Well, whilst the... Uh, life support mod doesn't actually kill him but if he was to die out here somehow that would mean he would respawn in the astronaut complex and that like is totally not the point i took him out for a bit of a swim around and then i was like oh no how am i going to get back in but it turns out if you just kept on like bashing your face against it and hammering the b button as fast as possible you could actually get back inside that pot pit and we are going to leave jebediah here stranded and alone in the middle of the ocean that just really leaves me to uh, show you this ridiculous footage in the background of us going around. We're fulfilling uh, a contract to go around and pick up some science at the KSC, but also we are going around and picking up science at the KSC because, you know, this is one of the early game grind things that you do. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do in Kerbal, but it most definitely speeds up your progress. Uh, I've just strapped two cockpits together. You can see that there. Um, do not strap them the other way. Do not strap them big bit to big bit. All they do is just kind of sit there and wobble back and forth. Uh, like some sort of crazy weeble wobble guy. Uh, you've got to you've got to do them like this, and they kind of work like a, a train wheel. So that's pretty good. That's all that leaves me to say is uh, thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. We're actually going to like do some space stuff instead of just mucking around on the floor here. With over four hours a week of streaming, uh, do feel free to come along Saturdays and Tuesdays, four till two or six till eight. I feel that we should be able to get enough footage together to release one edited uh, one edited video a uh, week. But of course, as I say, there's always the streams if you want to come along and uh, help push me to make this the most extreme video series we can possibly do. I will see you there. Bye.